Hello, you amazing people. It is Riley LH here again, and we're back here with the Blue Miata, and we're installing a Speedy EFI standalone ECU. If you don't already know, I'm going to be turbocharging this car, and I prefer not to be running the stock ECU for reliability issues, and also, I want to be able to get the most out of the turbocharger. I would go something like a Mega Squared ECU, but they are extremely expensive, and by what the specs of the Speedy EFI are, you get all the same thing plus more out of it for a much cheaper price. I think the kit for the ECU is around $400, and in that kit you get a throttle position sensor with an adapter to, for your stock one, a GM intake air temperature sensor with an adapter to your intake air temperature sensor, and the intake itself with the tuning cable, um, and that's all a really good price. I did get it used from one of my buddies, Sam. I will have his social medias linked in the video. Um, and he gave me a really good price for it all. So we're gonna be getting in the car today. This is completely unbiased because I'm not sponsored by Speedy EFI in any way, shape, or form. I just like what their brand's doing and making an affordable standalone ECU. So I'm gonna be giving it a shot. This install is very easy and you can pretty much do it with common at home hand tools. All you really need is a 9 16 drill bit, which I don't have just yet, a 3 8 NPT tap, a pair of pliers, electrical tape, a screwdriver, a knife, hose so you can do your manifold absolute pressure sensor and a socket set as well you want a laptop so you can go and tune the ecu from the car itself and make sure your throttle position sensor is set and all those other things are sorted before going and putting in our new ecu first we have to get the old one out so we just come over to our passenger car if you have a 1990 through 1993 miata it's going to be right here at the footwell you just pull up the carpet and it will be right there and if you have a 1994 or up it's going to be behind the passenger seat I personally have a 1990, so I'm going to have to pull up this carpet, and it's just a couple screws here, and then you pull up the carpet, and there's a protector, which I think is 4 10 mils. You take those out, and you can get your old ECU out. Alright, now this piece can just come straight off. I definitely need to clean this. Hi. Right. Now that that piece is off, our carpet will just come straight out. We just take off these tabs by lifting them up, and then we pull our carpet. Do have to work around the trim around the trim a little bit, but it's not bad. Okay, so we only snapped one bolt, but now it can come off. Miata's, their interior bits do rust sometimes because they are soft tops and they will leak and these interior bits are not like the exterior bits, which are made to prevent rust. Because normally, they're not seeing situations where they would rust, but because they are soft tops, things do rust, but luckily it's not too bad. So now it can just come straight out. And we can get to our stock ECU. Alright, now there's nothing else holding our stock ECU in, we can just pull it out just like that. And this little thing is the brain to my car. Okay, so now we pull the harness out of the ECU. There's just one pin on the top, you press that in, and pull. You'd be, you want to be very gentle with this to not mess the harness itself up or break any of the connectors or bend them. So just be slow and thoughtful. Okay, right before I pulled everything out, I realized one mistake I almost made. You want to disconnect your battery first. I like to disconnect both terminals just to be safe. If you are having problems with it, don't be afraid to use a flathead screwdriver, just be a little bit careful. Okay, now that our old ECU is fully unplugged, we can remove it. I would still be careful with this computer, so if you ever do need it again, it will still work. And I'm just going to pull out this old sound detonating because we don't need it. It's a little bit extra weight, and it looks horrible. Okay, now it's time to plumb the hosing for the map sensor. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some hosing. I forget what size this is, but they have it at pretty much any auto parts store. And right under our windshield wiper motor is a grommet. And we're going to go ahead and pop a hole through it so we can run this hose through 
this grommet so we're not messing up the hose because you really don't want to kink this hose up because it's kind of how your engine communicates with your ECU. Okay, so now that we have hollowed out this grommet, our hose will fit straight through it. So we're just going to feed that through. And now that it's on, we're just going to feed it down a good amount so we can get this into our cabin. Okay, so now that's on, we're just going to feed this hose through the hole that the grommet was in. Okay, so now that this hose is fully ran through, we got to hook it up to our intake. There are two ports on the intake manifold. One routes to your charcoal canister, which I will be deleting in another video, and there's one open port. I'm personally going to be using just the open port for right now. To start off, just take this cap. A pair of pliers will help you out a lot here. Then you want to route your hose under the intake manifold and then back up. Then you just simply go and put it on that connection. Take some of the slack out of it and now that's done. Okay, so now we're installing our throttle position sensor and we do have to take off our throttle body for this. I wish I could just get away with not doing it, but we do have to take it off. It's not that hard of a job though. Just four 10 mils and then that will come straight off. But first we do have to get our intake piping off. You do also want to go and disconnect your throttle cable, and it's just as simple as opening up the throttle, and then going and taking this, and pulling it off. Okay, so now our throttle body can just come off. Okay, so now that our throttle body is off, we just take off these two Phillip head screws, and then our throttle position sensor will come out. Okay, so now it'll just come straight off. Now the throttle position sensor is off, we just get this plug off and we're gonna take a flathead screwdriver and push off that clip. Now that that clip is off, we can just go and pull that off. Okay, so now we can install our new throttle position sensor. It's gonna go the opposite way from, from stock, so we're gonna go ahead and get that on slide it on. Now we can reinstall our screws. Don't tighten it. <laughs> okay, so now we can reinstall these screws. Don't tighten them too much. You just want them a little bit snug to make sure it's not moving. Alright, now that we got the new sensor on, we can install the throttle body just like we took it off. Now for the last step under the hood to get this thing running on a standalone ECU. We're going to go and delete the AFM so we can just run an intake air temperature sensor. Now that that clip is off, we can take off this connector and we can get rid of our AFM. In reality, you want to put this intake air temperature sensor as close to the intake as possible so it can get the most accurate readings. But because this is such a temporary setup with this car being naturally aspirated for not much longer, we are just going to be running it on this side, on the exhaust side. It's going to throw off the reading a little bit, but since it's a naturally aspirated car, it doesn't affect too much. So as you can see, there's just two pins. It is really easy to make one of these um, adapters for your intake air temperature sensor yourself, but I'm glad that Speed EFI provides one in the kit. So we just go ahead and slide that in. Take that clip and we're gonna wrap it around. Now that this clip is fully in and our throttle position sensor is on, we'd normally go and tap it into a pipe but again, we don't have a pipe to tap it in. We don't have the drill bit to tap into it. So we're just gonna be resting it inside of our normal intake pipe so we can get it running for today. But we're gonna go ahead and fit up our cross tube again. And we're gonna take this intake air temperature sensor and I'm just gonna put it inside the pipe. 
It's not gonna read perfectly, but we don't need it to read perfect. So now it's for the fun part where we actually install the ECU. Installing it is just as easy as taking it out. You just push in those clips and put on your manifold absolute pressure sensor, hose, and then we're done. And I haven't fully decided where I'm going to mount this ECU just yet, so I'm just going to have it loosely fitted in there to get the car running. And then once we decide where we're going to put it, we're going to go ahead and permanently mount it there. And again, taking it out is just as easy as putting it in. We're just going to slowly slide these pins in, making sure we're not bending any of them, and it's pushing a knee pin. Now that we're going to take our hose that we ran from our intake and put it onto this pipe right there. And the ECU is in and we're ready to start the car, but first we're going to grab a laptop and install Tuner Studios on it. Okay, so now we just whip out our laptop and wait for the jokes about being a Civic driver with the laptop in the passenger seat. But in reality, we're going to go over to Tuner Studios. Okay, so now we're on the Tuner Studios website and we're just going to go over to Downloads. And we're going to hit Tuner Studios MS. And we'll just hit Save File and we wait for that to download. Whilst we're waiting on Tuner Studios to download, and before I forget, again, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our battery. Now that the Tuner Studios setup is downloaded, we're gonna go ahead and open up the program. Hit yes. Hit accept. And then hit next, hit next again. Just fly through this. I'm gonna create a desktop shortcut. Hit next again, and hit install. Now we just wait for this, and then we can open up Tuner Studios. Now that we hit finish, Tuner Studios will load up, and we're ready to go. Now that it's done, we're going to open up Tuner Studios, and we're going to go out ahead and plug in our ECU. You just simply go to Arduino's website, you're going to come over to software, and download that. As well, you want to download the bass tune for your Miata. Um, it's on Speedy EFI's website, just click there. Hit save, and now that will download. Okay, so the bass tune that we downloaded, we're going to drag and drop that onto our desktop. Then we're going to open it back up Tuner Studios, hit create new project, name it whatever you'd like. I'm going to name mine NA Miata. And then instead of going down to firmware and hitting detect, we're going to hit other, and browse, go to our desktop, hit speed we know, I and I, and then hit open. Then we're going to hit next, next, we're going to check for our COM port, okay, so ours is COM port 3, and then we're going to hit next, and then hit finish. Okay, so now we are in. We're going to check that is all working, so it is officially up to the ECU. Okay, so now that we have everything working, they do suggest to go ahead and restart your computer, so we're going to do that now. Whilst the computer is restarting, we're going to open up our fuse box, and you want to make sure you pull this 10 amp fuse. So it's that fuse right there, it's going to be our fuel pump relay fuse, I'm pretty sure. So you just grab it, pull it out. And now we can actually start the car. So now we gotta go and set our sensors. So we're gonna go over to tools, calibrate temperature sensors, and then we're gonna go over to air temperature sensor, and we're gonna go and hit GM. So we're gonna scroll up, hit the GM, and put it in Fahrenheit, and right to controller. Then we can hit close. And then we're gonna go back up to tools, calibrate temperature sensor, coolant temperature sensor. Okay, then we go down to common sensor value and we're gonna hit RX7 seat LT S4 and S5. We're gonna write that to controller and then hit close. Now we're gonna come to the driver's side of the car, hop in and we can turn our key. You can see it all has power and we're gonna come back over to the computer and we're gonna go over to back to tools, calibrate TPS sensor and then hit closed and we're gonna get get current and then full throttle. We're gonna floor the car and hit get current. Now we can let back off, hit accept. And as you can see, our TPS is at zero. We floor it and we're at 100. So that is perfect. Okay, so it is the big time. I'm a little bit nervous, but now that everything is set, we can push in the clutch, turn the car on, make sure we're in neutral, and give her a crank. We're not getting fuel, apparently. 
We're getting no fuel. So let me try to figure that out. So the idle does jump around a little bit and you can see it kind of shoots up a lot. Uh, that's all tune related. I just need to go on the software and play around with it for a while. It's not something I've figured out just yet how to do. But once I figure that out, I will definitely change it so my idle runs good. Um, but now let's go ahead and fully mount up the ECU. Okay, so now that we're here at the ECU, we're gonna go ahead and mount it around this location. I'm not actually gonna go and drill and self tapper the uh, fireball. I would like to go and riv nut it, but I don't have a riv nut tool yet. Also, I don't know if this is exactly where I'm gonna put it or if I'm gonna change the setup at all. So with just putting the cover back over it, it does squeeze it tight enough where it doesn't rattle or it doesn't go anywhere. So we're just gonna leave it here. As well, we have to cut the tubing for a manifold pressure sensor. So let's go ahead and figure out how long we want this tube. I'm gonna cut about there. Now I can reinstall that. Boom, perfect. Okay. So now we're gonna take our cover and put it back over to the ECU. Okay, so now that we got that cover back on and we got our tuning cable running through that cover and out through the glove box area, we're gonna push back our carpet, put back in our glove box and put back on the trim. Okay, so now that the ECU is in and everything is done in that aspect, we're actually ready to turbocharge the car. So all I gotta do is make the custom manifold, mount the turbo, do water and oil lines, make the custom downpipe, do intake and intake piping, fuel other odds and ends, and the turbocharger will be done. This car will be officially turboed. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. It's been a fun challenge for me. I've never dealt with tuning or anything of the sorts. So it's been different and I've really enjoyed it. If you guys have any questions, I will try my best to help. Comment down in the video or message me on Instagram. I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. See you guys all next time. Peace out.